Hello, I'm H. Cynic, and welcome back to another Minimator tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about basics of animating a camera and some basic principles of cinematography to make your animations look cinematic, kind of like the movies, something like that. So, first thing we want to do is select our camera here, and we have our scene that we've been setting up all this time for, well, okay, if I can select it, okay, there we go. So we have this, and uh, right now basically our camera just does that little churn there, and it's not very good. We want things to look a little better than that. And first thing we want to do is uh, maybe have the camera follow Steve as he's walking in. So let's go ahead and reset our camera's parameters here. Get it set up on Steve. Like so. Here we go. And let's say we wanted to follow him a little bit closer. So we're going to zoom in. Let's make it about 30 on our field of view. And then we'll come over here and line it up. Just get a little bit of a turn on it. Raise it up. Get it kind of close. Generally, you might want it to, you know, it depends on the type of shot you're doing. But for this one, we're going to have it a little bit high and then make it tilt down just a little bit like that. All right. So now we got the initial point of the camera set up and we're going to zoom in on the timeline here. Okay, as you can see, we have a little bit of a problem here. We have this keyframe here, but we're going to go ahead and get rid of that one. That was the second keyframe, and we were only altering for the first one. So there we go. Now that we've got that little error taken care of, since we seem to always have little errors, okay, here we go. We're going to set another keyframe to where Steve stops, and we're going to move the camera about where we want it, just like this. And let's just say, just for the sake of catching everything in the shot here, we're going to actually get the camera to come out a little bit as we get closer. So we did that and then we want to tilt it down just a little bit more. And then basically what you end up with is this shot here. It's just a tracking shot. It follows Steve and not a whole lot going on there. And you may notice that the camera actually stops shortly after Steve does. And one of the reasons for that is because Steve has a transition applied here to ease out. So what we're going to do is line that up with the camera and then give it the same ease out transition and then we should have it stop pretty much on the same time as him. There we go. Now you may not really want that for your shot. You know it depends on what kind of cinematography you're going for. But this just gives you an idea like how you can manipulate the timeline of the uh, camera to stop uh, in conjunction with your character or at, you know, before or after, depending on how you want to set up your scenes. So we have that now. Pretty simple, just some basic keyframing and transitions, and we have the camera just tracking along with Steve. And another thing we want to do, and now that we have these keyframes all set up, then it's going to be a little bit of a problem if we want to add depth of field, because we haven't been editing uh, any of that in. We've had that unchecked. There we go, if I can get the words out. All right, so with depth of field, okay, you notice it actually created a new keyframe here. Let's get rid of that. Make sure that your marker is in the timeline we want it to be. And what I'm gonna do is select all the keyframes and then add depth of field. And right now it's actually not that bad, but we may wanna customize this. So what I'm gonna do is reduce the range. And what reducing the range does is actually make it if you uh, ever have any experience with a regular camera lens, then you'll know that there's aperture. And the wider the aperture, then the narrower the depth of field is, if that makes sense. Uh, and basically, range kind of does the same thing. It tells you like what range there is, the range value of like what's going to be in focus. And then depth is what point in the scene is your like focus, focal point, like what it's going to be set at. So what we're going to do is just reset this to foreground. Let's make our range about 50 and bring it in and just have make sure Steve's in focus. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's just round that off to about nine. And then your fade sides kind of makes it um, transition less harshly to what's in focus versus what's out of focus. So we'll just make that about 500. And, you know, depending on the shot you're doing, that can be can you know change however you want and right now since our range is 
wide enough. We don't even have to really worry about changing the depth of field for the slight change of uh, position of the camera here. But sometimes you may want to do that. Another thing to note is your field of view. So to mimic a real camera, if you're zoomed in really far, let's just say, so let's put another keyframe here. Let's just say you want to like zoom in and have like a really like detailed shot of, of Steve here. And generally for a real camera, when you zoom in like that, it creates a very shallow depth of field. So what you may want to do is bring your range way down. Let's make it about five and then figure out about what depth. It looks like about 29 or 30. It's pretty good for our Steve. Let's make it 29. And then you get this really shallow depth of field to kind of mimic a telephoto lens. And similarly, if you go, or contrarily, if you go to a very wide angle, uh, then having a more wide depth of field could actually be more uh, realistic. So it's important to note that you can do pretty much whatever you want. You know, it's your creative playground. But if you want it to kind of look realistic and kind of mimic the cinematography and the look of real animated films or real life live action films, then uh, you want to keep those uh, ideas in mind of how your lens is actually going to work and what it's going to look like in your scene and how that compares to what people are used to watching in professional animations and or live action films. So basically, what we have here is this scene and... Steve just stops and catches it. And what we want to do is, uh, what if we want to cut away during this point and have uh, the camera show Mr. Gollum over there as he's rearing back? So what we're going to do is put another keyframe in for our camera. Let's just say right about there. And what we want is to cut away. We want this to cut away from him to the golem as he's going to throw it. So we're going to add that keyframe there, and that'll keep the movement of our camera between this point and this point. And then at this point, we want to switch the camera position. So on the keyframe before, this one at 10 frames here, we're going to put an instant transition. And then on this one, we're going to go ahead and move our camera over here. And let's just do like a nice wide shot. Let's make this one an instant for now just so we don't have the camera try to move on us while we're doing that. That's another important thing to note. If you move this, then that linear transition is going to have the camera going back to the original position. So make it instant. And we're just going to have it come up like this. It's going to have kind of a, let's make this about 35, kind of a wide shot. With the sun in the background. Mr. Gollum is rearing back. And he waits <laughs> for a little while. Okay, here we go. So let's say we do this, kind of he rears back, waits a beat, and then let's say we transition to another angle again, about like this, and then he tosses it, and then it cuts back to Steve catching it, right? So what if we wanted to have this... Um, play out, you may notice, all right, here, here's the issue that I want to make you aware of. If you look at here, let's bring it in. Because we have this, notice how the camera stops for a moment. And what's happening here is there is that one frame where the camera doesn't have anything left to do but transition to this next shot. So you have two options to deal with this. You may not really consider that big, that a very big issue. But it's going to be kind of noticeable in the flow of your scene. So if we watch this, you can see that like little jump there. It may not be a very big jump, but if you watch it, you got a little bit of a hitch there. And, you know, if you're like me, you're a stickler about this and you want it to look perfect, more or less. There's two things you can do. You can go ahead and render this and then you can just delete that one frame from your timeline and your editor. Or you can use a dual camera setup to defeat that little hitch there. So what we want to do is go ahead and duplicate this camera. 
and it's going to have all of our keyframes there. You may not really have to duplicate uh, in your scene, depends on what you're doing, but for now, since we have our setups on this camera, we're just going to go ahead and try to duplicate here. And to mimic a real life camera setup, we're going to call this camera B, and then go ahead and rename this one to camera A. So this is your A and B camera setups, very similar to how they shoot things in real life. Sometimes with even more cameras in two, but this is just a dual camera setup. So what we're actually going to do is remove these frames here. And we basically only want B camera to be these two keyframes. And then we want A camera to take over for the others. So instead of having these keyframes here on our A camera, what we want to do is just get rid of these. And then it just takes us right back to our tracking shot of Steve. And instead of that, what we want is to have this one. We're gonna go ahead and make it un invisible and then invisible there. And what this is gonna do is make it to make sure that Minimator knows not to use this camera for this point in time. And then for this one, right here where this one becomes visible, we're gonna have a camera go invisible. Okay, once <laughs> if I select the right <laughs> the right item, here we go. All right, do that, and then we'll have it go invisible. And then at this point where this one becomes visible or invisible again, then we'll have it become visible. We may not be able to see it here because this is strictly um, showing the camera we have selected, but if you, here we go, let's deselect it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right, so notice that we don't have this here. Like this shot is, is actually telling it to go invisible. So why don't we do this one and we'll have it like that and then make it visible here. Get rid of that and then there. Now we've corrected that little error. As usual, we have small errors, but not too hard to fix. So we have the camera tracking him, just like that. And so all that's pretty much fine. And then we select this one, and all this one shows is these shots. And that looks fine. So what we'll do is deselect our cameras and see what the final render should look like. This is set on active camera, meaning whichever one is gonna be shown at a given time. So what we should have Cut away, throws it, there. Those shots are very quick and, uh, you know, you probably want to have some better timing on yours. But that just gives you a simple overview of, like, how to make that, see how it transitions now. The camera continues to move and then it cuts. So you don't get that slight little one frame jump in between camera movements. And you can have whatever you want B camera to be doing. A camera can be doing its own thing and then you can select between them to get a really, you know, dynamic and smooth, you know, shot set up for your grand magnum opus of cinematography in your scene. And uh, that pretty much covers the basics of editing your camera and your cinematography. There is one thing we can look at, though. If you go into your settings, and in your Ritter settings, you have your depth of field blur size. So if we come here... Right now, it's set to 1%. If we raise this up, notice how it blurs things out rather dramatically, or you can bring it down to where it doesn't blur at all. I don't know why you would. And by default, it's set to 1%. Generally, I don't really mess with this, but it's good to note uh, you know, how out of focus you want things to be. And like, if I make this, let's say, 3, and let's go back into our camera A here, and we can adjust the fade size of our uh, depth of field and notice how, you know, you can kind of go from a, a more like in focus point to an out of focus point a little less dramatically that way. Uh, you can increase your range so that more is in focus and, you know, change your depth, all the stuff that we talked about earlier. And that way, you know, if you really want some crazy out of focus look, then you have that option there. So it's good to have all those things kind of in mind uh, and set up 
when you go to do your scene so that you know exactly what you're trying to get out of the look of your film or your animation. So that's it. That's pretty much the final scene we have here. Nice camera cutting and tracking and depth of field and all those beautiful things that you can do with the camera and Minimator. And I think that pretty much covers the basics of using and editing your camera. We got dual camera setups, tracking cameras, using instant transitions to change your scene. Multiple camera shots. I've noticed a lot of animations will actually just have the camera fly back and forth in between positions when you can just use an instant transition or if you want to get a little more advanced, use this dual camera setup. And uh, it makes it a lot more cinematic, a lot more movie-like, and you'll get a lot better result by uh, editing your cameras this way. So with that, I think that's the end of this tutorial. And I thank you for joining me. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. And if you did, then I hope you'll come back for the next one. I'm not sure what we'll cover in the next one. Maybe uh, we'll get into some more advanced techniques with different things, but whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be a tutorial of some sort. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one.